student friends now we'll discuss the experimental uh, methods uh, in uh, x-ray uh, diffraction so what are the uh, different uh, experimental methods uh, to study the uh, x-ray uh, diffraction earlier we have seen uh, the bragg's law in uh, direct lattice uh, bragg's law in uh, reciprocal lattice uh, all these things that we have discussed uh, we have seen the eval construction uh, also we have uh, uh, discussed how the brillian zones they are formed and uh, brillian zones are very important uh, in order to study the x-ray uh, diffraction where we have discussed the concept of the uh, bragg plane so here the x-ray diffraction is used to uh, determine the structures of the solids as well as for x-ray spectroscopy study so this is very important technique which is used to determine the structures of the solids uh, means uh, what kind of uh, crystal structure that solid uh, exhibits uh, how the atoms are arranged what is the interplanar spacing and many more things then can be uh, that can be explored by using this uh, x-ray uh, diffraction uh, technique and we know that the basic principle uh, uh, behind this uh, technique is nothing but the uh, bragg's law uh, which is 2d sin theta is equal to n lambda d is the interplanar spacing uh, theta is the glancing angle angle made by the crystal uh, plane uh, with respect to uh, the incident uh, uh, x-ray and uh, here is the order of reflection and lambda is the wavelength of incident uh, x-rays so if you consider this as a first order uh, reflection we can uh, get this equation as 2d sin theta is equal to lambda where n is equal to 1 for first order uh, reflection we know that the reflection uh, takes place for those values of d theta and lambda which satisfies uh, this condition. So Bragg reflection is observed uh, for those values of d, theta, and lambda, which satisfies this equation to the uh, sine theta is equal to chain lambda, or it is equal to lambda for first order uh, ref uh, reflection. For uh, the study of the crystal structure of the material, here the x-rays of uh, known wavelength are uh, used and the angles uh, for which reflection takes place are uh, determined experimentally. So this is the simple experimental uh, uh, arrangement uh, used to study the X-ray diffraction is shown here. You will observe that uh, this is uh, the thing, but uh, so this is uh, X-ray tube. And from this X-ray, the beam of X-ray is made incident on the single uh, uh, slit uh, so, so that it gets uh, collimated and this beam of x-ray is allowed to fall on this crystal so this is the a uh, crystal and we know that in crystal there are large number of crystal planes which are oriented in different directions and from these planes x-rays will uh, get diffracted uh, or reflected by satisfying the bragg's condition and you will get the different spots uh, 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 rather than you, you will get a central uh, uh, spot uh, because of the transmitted uh, beam of x-rays and the reflected beam of x-rays will show uh, the spots like this and from the spots it is possible to uh, obtain the crystal uh, structure of that particular uh, material. So this information helps to determine the size of the unit cell and the arrangement of the atoms within the uh, unit cell. So here either you can uh, vary uh, theta or you can vary lambda and uh, you can uh, design a particular uh, method of uh, x-ray diffraction one more thing uh, that uh, you should remember is that since uh, sine theta since uh, sine theta is uh, always uh, uh, less than uh, unity we know that the sine theta is uh, always uh, uh, less than uh, unity uh, we can uh, conclude from above equation that the wavelength of x-rays that we are using to study the x-ray diffraction it must be less than twice the interplanar spacing so this condition we should remember uh, or we have to select such x-rays which have a wavelength which is less than uh, twice the interplanar spacing corresponding to that set of parallel planes normally it is observed that uh, d is of the order of 
three angstrom unit. Normally, it is observed D is of the order of three angstrom unit. Hence, we have to select the X-rays having the wavelength which is less than six angstrom unit. So we have to select the X-rays in uh, uh, such a, a way. That is, uh, X-rays used for diffraction uh, should have appropriate uh, wavelength to produce uh, the diffraction effect. If you select the X-rays of shorter uh, wavelength, uh, the diffracted uh, they will be diffracted through very small angles, and these angles will be uh, very small uh, to be measured experimentally. However, if you select the X-rays of longer wavelength, uh, these X-rays are unable to resolve uh, the details of the structure on the atomic scale. Hence, the proper selection of the wavelength of X-rays is very uh, important. So, depending upon uh, which uh, parameter we are varying, means whether you are varying theta or whether you are varying lambda, uh, and what kind of crystal we are using, depending upon these factors, there are uh, different uh, X-ray uh, methods. And those uh, uh, X-ray uh, methods, uh, uh, they can be uh, listed as, so first is the Lau method. Uh, we know that uh, uh, the Lau scientist has given uh, the basic idea of why the crystal should be used as a uh, grating to study the diffraction of X-rays that we have discussed in earlier lecture. The second method is the rotating crystal method. And last or third method is the powder method. It is also called as Debian-Scherer method because it is devised by the scientist uh, debian -Sherer. So if you look at the Lau's method, in the Lau's method, a single crystal uh, is held stationary and a beam of continuous X-rays is made incident on it uh, at a fixed glancing angle theta. And uh, thus the theta is fixed and lambda varies uh, and different uh, wavelengths, pre wavelengths present in the continuous X-ray spectrum uh, we'll select the proper uh, uh, reflecting plane out of large number of crystal planes uh, such that a Bragg's condition is satisfied. Uh, this technique is called as the uh, Lau technique. Uh, just I'm giving the brief idea uh, about the Lau uh, method. We have to discuss the Lau method in uh, detail in uh, next uh, lecture. That means in this Lau method, uh, lambda is variable. So if you look at uh, this uh, table, uh, you will observe that uh, the uh, this uh, wavelength is variable. So we have to select the continuous beam of X-rays means it contains the uh, range of X-rays having uh, different uh, uh, values of the uh, wavelength. So that is lambda is variable. And since we are uh, selecting single crystal, the theta is uh, fixed. Uh, there are uh, different uh, planes so that we can call D as the variable and the specimen is used as a single crystal. In this way, you can uh, study the uh, X-ray diffraction by uh, uh, using this uh, Lau method. Second method is the rotating uh, crystal uh, method. Uh, the name itself uh, clearly indicates that we have to keep the crystal uh, rotating at a very small uh, speed about the particular axis. That means a single crystal is held uh, in a path of monochromatic radiations and the crystal is rotated about an axis. Means here lambda is fixed because we are using uh, monochromatic uh, beam of X-rays and uh, angle theta is uh, 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 variable. It is a partly variable, we can say that. So that the different sets of parallel planes, uh, they are exposed to the incident rays for uh, different uh, values of theta and the reflection of X-rays uh, take place from those planes which uh, for which theta and D satisfies the uh, Bragg's condition. Uh, and this method is called as the rotating crystal method. So here also we are using a, a single a crystal. So this is the basic idea regarding the single rotating crystal method. We are going to discuss in detail uh, the rotating uh, crystal method in coming lectures. And last method is the uh, powder method. So here a powder method, again, the name clearly indicates that the specimen whose crystal structure is to be determined is taken in the form of powder. So, uh, and that powder is placed in a path of monochromatic uh, X-rays. Means here lambda will be fixed the monochromatic X-rays and angle theta will be variable because we are uh, using the specimen in the form of powder method. So each grain of the powder acts as a single crystal means there are different values of uh, uh, theta. And uh, since there are large number of planes, again, D value will be the uh, uh, variable. Means lambda is fixed for both uh, and uh, both theta and D vary. 
and large number of small crystallites with different orientations which are exposed to x-rays and the bragg's uh, reflection occurs for certain values of d theta and lambda uh, after satisfying the bragg's condition and the specimen used right here is the in the powder form so i have this table uh, clearly indicates which parameter is fixed and which parameter is varied in these three types of uh, diffraction uh, methods so this is just uh, idea regarding the experimental methods uh, or basic regarding the experimental methods in x-ray diffraction in the next lecture uh, we will be discussing uh, one by one uh, these three uh, different uh, uh, x-ray diffraction uh, methods so thank you for watching this uh, lecture i request you to like and share and uh, subscribe my youtube uh, channel uh, so that uh, i will uh, prepare more and more interesting lectures for you thank you once again for uh, watching this lecture